I want somebody who knows how to read the Bible to read for me in all the translations you have the book of Genesis 49 verse 14 to introduce the principle of the donkey. Then I will say a few things after the word has been read. I will also open mine. You open yours. And I'm glad for those who have come. We will learn something. I'm sure that by the end, you know I'm a teacher. You know teachers make what we call uh, <laughs> so by the end of the class I would want there to uh, you know, those teachers, only teachers know what I'm talking about. Those who are not teachers don't know. But teachers know that by the end of this class I would like my students to one, two, three. Yes. 49 verse 14. And this is a name, whenever it is named something is quoted. Any good reader with a mic Please, uh, every place. Thank you. You are up. To, you, you are. You are. You know the task. I've seen you read. Come, somebody who can read this text. Yes. Thank you, sir. You can go back to control other things. Yes. Yes. I'm reading from NIV. You are reading from NIV. Issachar is a robot donkey. Lying down between two saddle birds. Okay. Now, that is NIV. Any other translation? I said we'll read many of them. You know, it's good to read the Bible. I love the Bible. God's word. Read it, Mama. Genesis 14, 49 verses 14, King James Version. Issachar is a strong donkey. Lying down between two burdens. Thank you. Issachar is a strong donkey lying down between two burdens. Any other translation? Message Bible. Good. Message Bible. It says this. Yes. Issachar is one tough donkey. <laughs> one tough donkey. Mm -hmm. Crouch, crouching between the corals. Crouching between the corals. Wow. Any other translation? Yes, this lady here. Just read. Uh, eh? Now, wait. Somebody's coming to, 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 to let it come. You know, I like young people. They, they know how to read. Thank you. Yes. Good. And you stand when you read the Bible. Thumbs up for you. The Bible says, Yes. Isaka is a strong ass, mm -hmm. coaching down between two burdens. Good. Ash. Anybody else? Yeah, this gentleman here. We translated that one now. You know, it's good to, to read them. It's quite hot. This is extreme. I come from a very cold place. Hello. Now I'm in a very hot place. It's okay. We will try and survive. Read. Genesis 49 14. Yes. and Kanyana <laughs> <laughs> Only in the kingdom, only. You hear that one? Any other translation? You know, he, he has read another translation. <laughs> Any other translation? This is a Bible study, not a preaching time. I will preach because I'm a preacher, you know that one. But now we are doing Bible study. There's another one there. Uh, wow. Yes, lady. Genesis 49, 14, Amplified Bible. Issachar is a strong bone donkey crouching between the sheepfolds. Good, strong bone donkey. Now, any other translation that I don't miss before I, I, I say something that needs to be said? Yeah, let me mama, mama, this lady here. Let the Bible be read. You know, I, I love hearing the Bible being read. So much. Now you want to know that we can read the Bible. Hallelujah. In whatever language the Bible is read. I'm glad. Any other translation? Now you see we can even go those because those are also translation. Now, let me now start unpacking slowly. 
When you hear a donkey, what is donkey known for? Whether you call it ash or what is the same thing. What is it known for? It's called the beast of burden. Now, do you hear that one? That's why they say the strong back, whatever, because it uses the back to carry the what? Now you come. I want you to be my donkey. You know, there's a time Uma, Pastor Uma really taught, handled me very badly. He made me to be a donkey. So today I have a donkey. You come here. I have a donkey in this elder. Now, Neil Kidogo. Ah, yeah. See, Neil, uh -uh, just bend. Yeah. Ah. Now, if this was a donkey, and I have two jerry cans of water this side, how many will I put this side? I'm saying this is a donkey now. What will you put? What about if I have 20 kg here? What would I put for the donkey to walk? Aha! Are you sure? Oh, let me see. What about if I have Guniambilia uh, Maka this side? What will I put this side? Guniambilia Maka. Now you got it. Thank you, my friend. The rest is good. You see, the donkey is a beast of burden. So he's not complaining about the burden. But for the donkey to keep the load, it must be balanced. If it is one, then another one, one. If it is Nusu, then Nusu Pandeivi. You a donkey will only carry things and move with them. Now, my donkey come back. <laughs> For today only. <laughs> For today only, you will, be, you will not be a donkey. These are very serious elders, so just come. Now, if I have a donkey, and I make a gunyambili, yamaka, and one here, what will happen? Tell me, what will happen? It will be not be doing what? Going anywhere. Not balanced. It, 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 it. Thank you, my donkey. You are a good one. <laughs> now, the donkey principle, listen to me as I start is teaching me that for us to go far, we must live a balanced life. Ah, you didn't get me. Let me start the first principle. The first principle that we learn from, from the donkey here is that, of course, we have a burden. For us to carry the burden far, and we must live a balanced life. Hallelujah. Do we? While we call that, we say, as damp as a mule, the donkey knows if I have to carry the burdens and go far, I will put it in a balance. And when the balance, the weight is stressed, is stretched on both sides, it carries it with minimal damage to it because the weight balances. So that's why I said it crouches between the two. It does not go on one only. It must have two. And many of us need to learn from the donkey the principle of balanced life. Atakolala. You know there's a Bible that says there's a time for everything. A time to do this and a time not to do this. Even in sleeping. By the way, let's see how God balances the blueprint of things. And to us, we stay here. Even normally, the night has got many hours normally here in uh, where we could roll. How many hours for the night? And how many for the day? Twelve. Balanced. And in that 12, 24 hour, which all of us have, and how we use it makes a lot of difference. By the way, the difference is not on the hours. It's on how we use the what? The hours. That's the difference here. The late Pastor Okumu, Johnson Okumu, made the following statement, and I quote. Do I quote in the language you used it, or I just paraphrase them in English? The language you used it, eh? Let me start. Pesanielo, toen manawacho guro. Pesanielo, toen manawacho guro. So he was saying, there's money here, but it depends how strong is your back to get it out from there. Yes! So money is there. People have, have, have become billionaires. By the way, during COVID, 
almost every other sector fail except agriculture. Didn't fail. Hmm? Yes. So that's what he was saying, that money is in the year, in, the, in, in the farming or whatever, but depends whether you will have enough back to do what? To go and do the work. That was one thing he said. The second one he said, this one you may not like, those who are in town. But let me leave this one. Let me, the other one, that is easier. Pesa ni book. Ten man maro bongo. You know, some people here earn because they have used this one to get knowledge from the word. By the way, how many letters do we have? Those who have gone to school, how many letters do we have? 26. How you use those 26 will make a difference. You, books have been published and what and what, but using the only, how you arrange the 26? The 26 will remain the 26. But how you arrange them? Make a big difference. Make you to go and become a professor or whatever. Or where you are, you know where you are. Is how, how do you handle those 26 letters? That's you know. I, I don't want to talk about it. Make some people fail, some people pass. And books have been written, and books will secondly be written, but using only how many letters? 26. Some have been written, some will be written, some are being written. And only using how to arrange. So it depends on how you want to arrange the 26. Then the last one that you may not like, that he said, Pesa ni ufuko. Ten ma chuny margolo. Pesa. Pesa yiko mfukoni. Lakini, mboya kufanya nini? Iyo tuni yoshira. Money here. The people here are ruined money. The art of taking it out from the pocket or from the bank and bringing it here is the issue. Not that we don't have them. Everybody said, Muko, Mambo. Things are there. Money is in the heart. So, what this gentleman is telling us here in the book of 49 of Genesis, verse 14, Issachar knows that for you to live, because there are, this world is full of burdens everywhere. But how do you live with the burdens and let them not crush you? It is learning from the donkey of balanced approach. So we have 24 hours. If you ask God how he divided it, divided it this way. Eight hours of work. That's why normally the standard hours for work is how many hours? Eight hours of sleep. And eight hours of leisure, 24. Balanced approach to life. Some of us, when... <laughs> My wife was talking to our children one day. He was telling them, now I'm seeing you sleeping when people are awake. Just sleep now. A time will come when others are sleeping and you're awake. I don't want to talk so loud because those things can be found even here. I don't want to talk so loud. There's some, when other people are sleeping, those who are not sleeping at the right time, now is when they are awake when people are sleeping. And uh, that's why you can even find some people leave the home with the bed and come to sleep where? I hope that not happen here. Now let me talk slowly. You have come home where there's a bed. Where there's a blanket. You leave that place. Come to the what? Sit on the plastic chair or on what make me sick. <laughs> on this one here. And sleep there. <laughs> Leonard Mambotella <laughs> Naulesa. You see, those are abnormal of life. We do the very opposite. And so my my my, my wife was telling our children, when it's time to study, study. Don't go there to meander. Uh, uh, we are in a university, and because of the numbers, we have students who are staying outside. They have come to study, but some have left studying. When the time comes, when they are married, they divorce. When they are not supposed to, to be studying, they are busy working with... <laughs> when the time comes for them to get married, now they are fighting and divorcing one another. Because they are not living a balanced approach to what? Doing... By the way, Ishaka, let me before I get hot. Ishaka, every time it is mentioned, something positive is mentioned, go to First Chronicles. First Chronicles, 
12:32 every time that name is mentioned something comes in i want you to get that word and i pray in the stewardship stewardship is basically about balance approach to life readers i want them I, you know, I like reading. And I like what I like here. You have carried the real Bible. I'm seeing the new Petra. I like that sound. I like it. Of course, I tell people, which is true. I have Bible in iPad. I have Bible in computer. I have Bible in phones. I have Bible in whatever. But the best one I like is this hard one. This is the best. Because no message comes when I'm reading it. No. No. <laughs> The power don't go off when I'm, I'm opening it. No, it does not go off. No other message pops in. Except God's word. Hallelujah. I love the hard copy. Can somebody read from the hard copy? First Chronicles 12, 32. First Chronicles 12, 32. The yes. Bible says. The Bible says. Men of Issachar. Men of Issachar. The name is the same again. Mm -hmm. Who understood the times. Who understood the times. And knew what Israel should do. Or to, and how to do it. They only don't know what to, should be done. And even how to do it. Men who have what? Men and women who have understanding. That's number one. 200 chiefs. Don't worry, the rest just leave. When you okay. hear the, I have stopped, that means the part I wanted I've taken already. You see... Men of Issachar have understanding. And now I pray that men and women of victory will have what? Understanding. That they will know. They will need to know what needs to be done. And how to do it. The donkey teaches us that for us to go far in this life of burdens is to live a balanced life. Let's talk to young people. When they are not supposed to get pregnant, they get pregnant. And either flash or come out of schools. Now when they are married and they are now told to get, now they cannot get pregnant. Look for me in a manner to suggest, let me come this side. <laughs> let me leave that side alone. <laughs> Can I try here or I try this side? <laughs> you see, Ishaka. Is not only a beast of burden. Issachar uses understanding or wisdom to help us balance life. And the one is we must do the right thing at the right time in the right way. Tomorrow, let me bring one thing, but let me tell you what I'm... Tomorrow, I would want to bring... One of the most precious lessons I've learned from the Bible, I call it night and day principle. If you have to miss for the whole week, don't miss tomorrow. The other ones, now I'm telling what I'm, I mean the truth. Tomorrow, don't miss. The others, I allow you to come. If you want to come, don't come. But for tomorrow, when I will be handling the day-night principle, as found in the Bible, do what you can do. To be present. After that one, don't come. We will meet on you with the Sabbath, on Sabbath day. Let the others come. Now that's okay. But for tomorrow, when I'll handle, because I'm, I'm following here, the principle here, which is called Ishakar, a strong doki, tells us we have burdens, but for us to carry them, we must balance it. Aha, then we will go. You know, in the church, we have burdens. We must carry. We must build the church. We must still give tithe and offerings. Blah, blah, must be done. How, and you must also keep your home. Blah, blah. How do you do it? The balanced approach to life takes us far. For only those who are wise, who have understanding. And that is why Most of us who don't have understanding, if you think at night, instead of sleeping, of course I'm a fan, but I'm not a fanatic of football. I watch football, but I'm not a fanatic. Now a fanatic will watch a match 
and up past a nun, a bad cook was screen and shouting and jumping and almost doing the same thing. When that time is for what? It's not for sleeping and having a good time for those who have families to take care of. And they are willing even not to eat because that game, those we don't know, has, has lost. And they don't know you. I've seen people in Kenya even dying. That either Arsenal or Man U or what has lost. <laughs> I know here they are not there. But you see, in the donkey principle, it tells us how to carry our weight in a balanced manner so that we don't break our back and we also reach, listen to this one, we reach our destination. Did you hear me? We carry it and reach it, not carry it and it falls by the roadside. I've seen people even in marriage who start very well but don't end well. Ah, atakwakasi. Wanaanza vizuri but they don't finish. The Bible says the good book and the, quote me get me this book I'm I'm I'm, I'm paraphrasing it. You tell me which book is it? The end of a thing is better than its beginning. The end not the beginning, the end of a matter. How we will end when time comes is more important than what we start, even though starting is not bad. But the Bible, the good book says, the end of a thing is better. Which book? Uh, if you have, you know, I'm a teacher and I'm married to a teacher. Tell me which book. Yes, Felix. Uh, that's Felix, eh? You know, you have been my member for long. If you get, don't get this thing, it will not be good for you, but try. <laughs> Which one? No. Chapter 12. No. So you are in trouble. You will pay very dearly. It is Ecclesiastes, but not chapter 12. Anybody want to try? Felix, you have tried at least. You have not kept quiet. As a big engineer. Now, anybody? The end of a thing. I've only left the part. Where it's laughter. That's the one I've left. That's what I'm not saying. The end of a thing. The family life uh, couple. Tell them not to do that. That's what I call balanced life. Now is a time for Bible study, not a time for elders meeting. So why don't you look for, you know, in the house you are the elder. <laughs> the reverse role. Eh? You know, that's what we call a balanced approach to life. Who can tell me that text? The end of a thing is better than its beginning. Try. Ecclesiastes chapter verse 8. Yes. You see, I want you to know what that text is saying. What we're saying, the donkey principle is also saying. It is not how to start. It is to end. So the donkey knows for it to end the journey. He must carry it in a balanced approach to life. Let me talk with those who are boyfriend and girlfriend. You start being girlfriend and boyfriend. Let me talk to young people. The rest, close your ears. You are not. I'm talking to young people. You know, if you're a young person, let me make you the mistake. And young girls, listen to me. It's not bad having a boyfriend. Of course, it's bad having a sugar mommy. Or <laughs> my daughter was telling me that you have classified them. And uh, I didn't. I, I, that thing, the ages I may, I may forget, but I said. Those who cannot marry you, those who are below the marriage of age, are called babes. So if there's somebody who have a boyfriend, but that you know cannot even marry you. It's only interested in your figure and other things. They said he called them babes. Then he told me the second class of those who are working and but not married and have gone through school. And, and between age 24 here to 30, he told me those are called potential. Those ones you don't play with. That one! He that one you don't play with. They call potential. That one you hold. And uh, I only one daughter. So the daughter was educating me. Then he says there are those who are 30 plus. They are married. But they still look at you. So they are not looking for to marry you. They just want to have... Had a time because when they were supposed to have a good time, they didn't know what to do. They didn't know the donkey principle. 
and they are maybe moneyed, but they are frustrated at home. Mambo ni ngumu kwa unyumbani. Ngumu. Wana pig wana. So they just want to enjoy you, but they have some money. He told me those are called sponsors. Age 30 hapo to 40 hapo, 45. They are called sponsors. To 35, up to 50 there. Then there are those who are 50 to 60. But they still look for young people. They think they will be younger. <laughs> they, they told me they are called uncensored. <laughs> oh, my daughter. I'm learning. <laughs> There's no much. You, you will only join the many, but there's no much sana. Then he told me there's a last group, 60 plus. They still want to have time with you. Now put this thing on for me. <laughs> the 60 plus, uh, really there's nothing apart from the money and taking you walks. Uh, nothing much will happen. But my daughter called me, they call them for sales. <laughs> Fossil. <laughs> Nothing good or whatever. But what I was telling you, what I brought come to that one. You see, in balanced approach to life, I was talking to the girls now. Let me talk to you now. You see, you make one mistake and you will not finish that game. When a boy wants to you as a friend, that's okay. But the moment you yield and you let him know you sexually, you've lost it. You're just a man the data. Now, tatafuta hiyo na na tafuta wengine. So, if you want to live a balanced life, when you are still not married, stay not married. If the man is not marrying you, let him wait. Balanced approach to life. And when you can wait, and then you are married, that marriage, the possibility of it reaching the end is very high. But it will not go far. Miskia. That's why there are some people you see them. They were married. Now they are not married. Because they didn't know the donkey principle. You must carry the burden, yes, but you must reach. The man who, the lady who was our matron when we were wedding is called Mrs. Angenda, Mary Angenda. And he told us something I've never forgotten. And he, he spoke in Luo, not in English. He told me this. Ongeri and ongeri. <laughs> See, there are some things because you know in marriage, for example, it is and what do you part? Money. Until death. So before you die, that is your weight. You carry it. That burden is yours. When you find it's too hot, you 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 breathe, but just breathe there, not running away. For us to end the road, we must learn from the donkey that for you to go far with burdens, you must live a balanced life. And you see, in Christianity, it is not the beginning. It is really the end that matters most. Because I've read from the Bible, and I don't know whether I have time to preach. Unless something is pushing me to start preaching, yet it's Bible study. I've learned in life, there are people who have started well, but I've ended very badly, like Judas. He started well. He was the treasurer. I want to thank treasurers who are here. He was the treasurer. He was the most learned among the twelve. He knew the debit and the credit. He knew how to, 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 to bring a tie of balance and, and, and let things balance. Except he didn't know how to balance his life and greed for money. And you saw Judas... Not only betrayed the master, he did not finish with him. He is dead and he hanged himself and he will not be in heaven. And there are some of us who have started well in life. And they are Christians, they are church leaders. Will you finish the race? Listen to Paul talk. I have fought the good word. I have why don't you finish for me? I finish the race. I know. You hear those things that he's talking about. Those are powerful. I know there is. You see, he knows, even though with all those burdens, he has kept faith. And he knows the end is a crown. 
Some of us come to this church, they think for entertainment. They don't know that the end of a matter is better than this beginning. They don't know that we have heaven to win and hell to shun. They don't know that we are on a journey which even though it is hard, the end is assured. The donkey principle not only tells us to balance life, but for us to reach our destination with our goods is critical than starting to carry it and leaving it. When you are baptized, you are very faithful in running tithe. Are you still running tithe? I'm talking to you. You didn't learn from the donkey principle. The balanced approach to life. And the ability to reach. Paul. Let me now say Paul now in the New Testament. Let, let me quote Paul. Uh, let me paraphrase him. Mm. In a race, all runners run. Run to get the prize. Run in a disciplined manner. And run so that you are not disqualified for the prize. So that one, I think all of us know. Which book is that one? I've just paraphrased. Verse 24 of 8 to 27. Which verse? Corinthian, which one? Which, which one? Which one? Uh, Corinthian, which one? I want you to read that. You see, the goal of Christianity is not to start. It's to end. I've seen those who start class one. Don't make it to Sunday 8. I've seen those who start in form 1. Don't make it in form 4. I've seen those who go to the university. Start very well. But drop out. Ah, this terminal degree, the PhD one. I've seen many. That one, the, the, faculty, the, the, the casualty is very high. I've seen so many people starting. <laughs> but very few ending it. First Corinthians chapter what? Chapter 9, verse 24. Can you read somebody who can read the Bible? Let the Bible be read. Sometimes it's good to see the goal of a balanced life. We must reach the end, not the start only. Can you read now? First Corinthians chapter 9, verse 24 following. Until its end. You know that in a race... You hear that one? You know. All the runners run, but only one wins their prize. Only one wins the prize. Do what? Run. Don't you know? Mm -hmm. You must run in such a way that you may be victorious. Aye. Continue reading one. Why are you stopping when I've not stopped you? Everyone who enters an athletic contest must practices self-control in self everything. Mm. They do it to win a wealth, a wreath that withers away. We, but, but we run to win a prize that never fades. So? That is the way I run. Uh -huh. With a clear goal in mind. mind. Uh, so that, that? That in the way I fight, not like someone shadow boxing. Mm -hmm. No, finished. I yes. keep on disciplining my yes. body, making yes. it serve me so that eh, after I have preached to, to others, others, I myself, will not somehow be disqualified, disqualified for the price. Hmm. You see, the donkey knows that we must end. Paul knows that what we are looking at is the tip. By the way, do you know the difference between um, where I come from? I don't know whether we, do we have such people here. You know where I come from now? We call them the source of champions. Nandi County. The source of champions. Do you know the deal between athletes and football game? Football game is the collective result. What happened to all affect all of you, but not in athletics. Everybody train for himself, run for himself, get the prize for himself. Ah. You know, say it's the goalkeeper who sold us. Also, I get your goal. Your goalkeeper also. At Omi, I pay nice to go. Oko. No, it is not about somebody. It is you alone. And in this journey, it is not you and your wife. Niwe pekeyako. 
You know, you are a great friend of mine. But it, you will not go to heaven because of your wife. Oh, not go. It is because of you. When you don't go to heaven, don't blame it on somebody. Blame it on yourself. Pastor, I'm not going to It's the pastor who said, No, it's not the pastor. It's you who reacted the way you reacted. <laughs> no. <laughs> You seem not to like me now. But that is a fact. In this race, it is not like football. Everybody must discipline himself for herself. Everybody must run for himself for herself. And everybody must do what? No one in the Bible says, not even those people, their children will go because of them. Everyone must do it for himself. So don't say, my mother, my husband, they attack it at all. It's not your husband or your wife. It is where I'm working. You see here, they don't hear. All must run to get the what? To get the what? And do you know the price? Eternal life. Do you know the, the price? Be with the Lord forever and ever. That is the price in a world. Never grow. Never grow. In a while, we will never. So you don't need to go, go there and clean it this way. You don't need to. The brass industry will stop. Because they will always remain the way they were, when they were. You know now, you have to struggle to bring them up. Not when we go there. <laughs> when we all go to where? What a day it will be that day. You see, that is the goal of why we are learning about stewardship and the donkey principle of balancing the Lord. Yes, the Lord is there, but you must balance it until when the price tag It's at the end, not at the beginning. You see, in running, for example, let me tell you another difference between football. Football, you can start and in the first two minutes you score the first goal and you keep them from scoring another one you will be declared a what? Win. But not in running. You may start number, the first lap, you are the number one. And you, you, <laughs> you are number one when the first lap. And by the tenth lap, they will say, because you are number one in the first lap, now we give you the prize. You, it is only, and you see those runners, they wait when the bell is due on. Then they gather all the energy, and they know it is the, the tape that matters. Who reaches it first? Not who started leading the way. And my friends, the donkey principle is not who started being a Christian. It's who has ended being a what? Who has carried the load? There's a load. Kuja ruda sanani, fanya ivi, this youth, this one, chango. Yeah, those, those are the loads that are there. But it is not those loads. It is you able to carry in a blessed manner until you reach the what. And like Paul, you can say, I have finished the race. I now know there is a price. My men and my ladies who are here have not come here to waste your time. I've come here to point to you that the donkey, though damp, the donkey is wise. He carries the burden without complaining. Some of us complain too much. Oh, Lord. This one. The donkeys only say, balance me the Lord. And I will go the journey. We will balance it to end it. To Tamalesa. Not to Malaysia. Hallelujah. So it's not being an elder. People are fighting over. It's not being a church officer. It is all about balancing it to reach the what? The price. And the price will be obtained when Christ comes. Hallelujah. Did we reach a balanced life? Time may not allow me, but let me, if I had time, I would introduce something because I want to ask you to leave you time to ask me questions. I would have introduced to you, let me introduce it briefly, what I also call it Joseph principle. It's also a balanced approach to life. You know, let me tell you the same thing here now. Now, 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 listen to me now, 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 now. A king who thought he was in charge 
who would give orders, discovered a dream that he could not sleep anymore. And the, the dream was repeated twice, but very simple. The first dream, he saw what for seven years? Huh? Seven what? He saw seven fat cows, very fat. Seven one of them. Then, before he woke up, seven others, ugly, thin, looking dangerously, and as they were still watching, those thin ones moved towards the fat ones, and what did they do to the fat ones? They swallowed them, and after swallowing them, they became fat. No, they remained what? Thin. They said, hey. Seven heads of what? Wheat. Looking good. These people were from Kale, where I come from, because we have cows and wheat. You know, in Kale, where I'm coming from, uh, there are only, if you be respected, there are three things you must have. If you are to be respected, I'll tell you them. Number one, you must have cows. Number two, you must have big land. Huh? You hear those two things? I had you the third one. You need to have a tractor. <laughs> <laughs> and then in the big land, they grow wheat and maize. So I think this thing was somebody from, from that place. Because they have talked about the cows, we have them. Hallelujah. Now wheat, we also have them there. So the good ones, the eyes were all looking good and beautiful. Then the thin one came and ate the small ones and they remained thin and bad. Wow. Let them look for people. Only Joseph could be found. And when Joseph came, listen to me now. When he came to the stage, he said this thing. It, I'm glad the balance was there. In life, the seven years will be very plentiful. There will be plenty of food. There will be plenty of things. There will be plenty of rain. You will have promotions. You will have a lot of money. You will have a lot of influence. For seven years, you will have them. But that's not the end. You will also have another seven what? Of a man. That's why sometimes I tell people, when you see yourself climbing up and up, that's okay. Just also know there's a time for coming down. See, you in the I told you somewhere that what goes up comes down. What goes up also comes down. So God is telling us, when you want to live that balanced life, when you have plenty, when you have the title, use it well. Because it will come to pass that it will end. When you have a title, use it well. A time will come. When you have a husband, you will use it because a time will come, you may not have a husband. When you have a wife, the same thing. You know, you take for granted what you have until where are they? When you have lost it, it's when you want to cry over it. Hey, my husband. But when your husband was there, and a quitter. Me not yet. Ti? Me not yet. Ti? It will. Ti? We rat. Ti? Nekudo maki. Ti? But now, when it's dead, now you go there. Hey, who are you going to go? I'm going to go. <laughs> when he was alive, you, you took him for granted. Now, when he's dead, you cry your heart what? Out. The donkey is telling us to do what? Seven years and seven years. They're the same. How do you use the seven years of plenty will determine how you handle seven years of what? Now, up and you are Up. Mrs. said, when a luo works, Gairi kubwa, kila kitu hapa, nyuma ya kodesa hapa Nairobi tu, hapa town kizumu. Wacha, akufema something hapa na hindi nyumbani. <laughs> Wacha ni wache hapo. 
<laughs> My friends, the years of plenty will come to an what? It is only those who balance the years of plenty with the years of scarcity that will see it through. And the whole world over, when, when Joseph came, now the time is not allow me now because I want to allow, Joseph came and said, you see, the answer is simple. You, you have been warned before it happened. Now do this, if you're wise. In the years of plenty, keep how much? Take it from the people's hand. Take how much? A fifth. Now, those who know math, a fifth is what percent? One over five is what percent? It's 20 percent. Ah! He said, you take 20 only percent from them for this every year when they have plenty. Just take how much for them. And keep it with, remove it from them. If you leave it with them, it will not help them. Take it away from them. Take the, 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 the one fifth, the twenty percent from them. Keep it with the king. For how many years? Those who are surrounding, those who did not have Joseph, all the God of Joseph revealed to them. When there was plenty, they were eating, they were dancing, they were saying, one chord. <laughs> oh, until what time? Until what time? The drought. What happened when the drought came? The hundred percent they were having got finished. Then they were hungry. Now they were looking, and now money they could not eat money because they wanted food and they could not eat money. So there was only one place that had food. For the people of Egypt and the entire world. Which people are those ones? Eh? And what kept them? So that they don't die in the time of scarcity. The one-fifth that was kept by the king. Hmm. The ten-ten principle. You see it. The donkey knows it. Those who will make it when there's adversity are those who have used the fifth principle, the tenth ten, the ten percent tithe and ten percent offering. If they have carried them, balanced them, that way it won't good. That one given to the hand of the king will be able to sustain us when there is famine. And there is famine in the land. I don't know also you but what is in your hand will not sustain you when there's a problem. But what was given to the hand of God to balance the question for you will see you through the hard times. The donkey principle, and I end now here, and I want to take some questions, is a symbol of balance in life when you have and when you don't have, and when you use it well, the pimples, it will take you far when you are in need. By the way, we are going to heaven. You will not take your car and other things to heaven. But the souls, that's why I want to read my last text, and what you who will get it. Those who help others will shine like stars forever. 